10 times Naruto proved he was the best Hokage. What sets Naruto apart is the way he's consistently dealt with the other villages peacefully, making him one of the series' best Hokage. When it comes to Hokage in Naruto, they've ranged in effectiveness, all of them having a fatal flaw to them. For Hashirama, it was his connection to Madara. For Kakashi, it was the fact he never truly wanted the position in the first place. As with all things, the Hokage all had their pros and cons to them. The one thing they all had in common was a willingness to protect the village, even if it meant losing their own lives in the process. What sets Naruto apart is the way he's consistently dealt with the other villages peacefully. 10. He helped keep the peace between nations. More than any Hokage, Naruto managed to bring peace between all of the five great nations. When peace throughout the world seemed unattainable thanks to the Atsutsuki clan. The next best thing was having the nations remain united so there wasn't another great war. That's what Naruto does, even managing to calm Anoki's attempt at upsetting the balance. This shows what a great leader he is, a far cry from who he was at the start of the series. 9. He was respected by everyone. There's always been a level of respect for Hokage throughout the world. What makes Naruto different is that his respect isn't founded solely on fear. As was often the case. The other nations look up to him and remember the role he had in helping save the world from Kagaya. Even the other Kage defer to him due to this. It's a level of mutual respect other Hokage never had. 8. He was proactive to problems. Rather than sitting on his hands or hoping things would sort themselves out, Naruto was very proactive as Hokage. The best example of this was when the Atsutsuki threatened the world. Instead of waiting for their arrival, Naruto took preparations towards the threat the clan held. Naruto didn't just do it with Konoha either, he spread the information to the other nations as well. Trying to come up with the best plan of attack. It's what a good leader should do. 7. He put the ninja world first and Konoha second. Before Kakashi, the nations always worked as singular entities. They'd keep secrets from one another even if they were allies. It's a time period that Anoki represented, something that reared its head during Boruto. Naruto and the new guard were all different. They were willing to see the world first and their nation second. It's a big reason the five nations were able to continue coming together as one. 6. He gives his heart soul to his nation. Naruto takes the position of Hokage very seriously, giving his heart and soul to the job. He sees them all as a family, one that he has to protect by any means necessary. He spends long hours trying to figure out solutions to any problem the village might have and continually exhausts himself with his use of shadow clones. It does come at the detriment of his family. Something that has repeatedly sparked issues with his son. 5. He's the only Hokage who had to balance having children on screen. All the Hokage tended to be loners, from Kakashi never having an on-screen lover, to Tsunade dying before having children. Minato and Kushina both died before they had to deal with the responsibility, as well. The third and first were never shown having interactions with their own children, only their grandchild by way of Kanoamaru and Tsunade. Naruto is the only one who's been shown having to actively deal with being both a Hokage and parent, a job that's exhausted him. 4. His ideals carried over to the villagers. Naruto has had a profound impact on many people, from those in the Kanoha 11 to villains throughout the series and even younger shinobi like Kanoamaru. Naruto's view of the world has touched several characters, changing even the most pessimistic. It's his strongest ability, one that makes Naruto such a great Hokage. No Danzo is waiting in the shadows trying to usurp his power. Only a village that wants to support him. 
3. Chunin exams were universal among nations. In the past, the Chunin exams were very segmented. Even in Part 1, the only reason the Sound and Sand villages showed up was that they planned on killing the third Hokage. With Naruto in charge, the other villages were all participating, letting them get out their competitive streak in a way that didn't spark controversy between the two nations. It showed a lot of the solidarity Naruto built up with the other nations. 2. He attended the funeral of Anoki. In the past, another Kage's death would have been seen as an opportunity, a time to seize the moment and strike at that village. It's a line of thinking that Anoki himself would have felt before atoning for all of his sins by defeating Ku in Boruto. Naruto never felt that way, not only attending Anoki's funeral, but speaking at it. His words rang true as well, stating that Anoki left behind a grand legacy and a lesson of perseverance. 1. He never used his powers to lord over the other villages. For the rest of the world, it's a good thing that Naruto was such a benevolent person. If he wanted to, Kanoha could have easily overtaken the other villages on the backs of Sasuke and Naruto alone. It's something even the other Kage noticed, especially Kuratsuchi, who used that to her advantage in an argument. The imbalance of power was more immense than it was when Hashirama Madara were their generation's powerhouses. The fact Naruto doesn't lord his power over other villages when he realistically could makes him quite the benevolent Hokage. <laughs>